Hey there, I'm Bailey and welcome to my channel where we discuss all the tips and tricks necessary for you to live a life of adventure. If you are looking forward to backpacking with your dog this summer, or maybe through hiking with your dog, or even just day hiking with your dog, then this is the video for you. If you are wondering about how you should take care of their feet, if they should wear booties or not, what is this paw wax everyone keeps talking about, and everything else you could possibly wonder about foot care for your dogs when it comes to hiking. Now I'm super excited to finally be able to tell everybody that Prima Skittles and I are going to be through hiking the Continental Divide Trail this summer. So if you don't know, that is a 3,000 mile trail that spans from Canada to Mexico. We're gonna be leaving in June and probably finish some time in November if everything goes as planned. But the main thing with that is that their feet are going to be so, so important. You know, I've been hiking with them for a long time. I never really had foot problems when we were just day hiking, but definitely the whole reason I had to send them home on the Colorado Trail was because of foot problems. And the biggest issue that we dealt with on the San Luis Loop just constantly was feet problems. So I've been spending a ton of time you know, researching everything I can find about proper foot care for dogs, specific to hiking and backpacking, but I've also been diving into the world of dog mushing as well as hunting to try to find other solutions to common foot care problems that people have with their dogs when it comes to spending time with them in the backcountry. So before I dive in, I do wanna say that if you are interested in getting more tips and tricks all about hiking and backpacking, or if you just wanna follow us on our CDT journey, then you should definitely consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, so the first thing that people tend to ask is they say, you know, I'm just getting started hiking with my dog or I'm going to be going on some overnight backpacking trips this summer. Do I need to have booties or paw wax or what should I do for my dog's feet? Now, I know it's really tempting. A lot of people really want booties and think their dogs need booties or they're concerned about their feet. But the biggest thing that I have learned just from my own experiences, as well as from one of my vet friends who has working dogs, is that booties can really do more harm than good. A lot of people have noticed that booties can affect their grip, so especially if you use like rubber bottom booties, those can make it hard for a lot of dogs. In my own experience, booties can cause a lot of sores, so that is one thing we battled a ton over this last summer, was Prima kept getting sores from her booties on the tops of her feet, because her feet were hot, and definitely from her dew claws, so if you have a dog with dew claws, those don't always mesh very well with booties. They have a hard time staying on sometimes, finding the right fit. They wear out really fast. So mine, you know, I used really high denier booties over this last summer and they would only last a couple days before they'd start to get significant holes in them. And because of that, even if you buy cheaper booties like mushing booties or make your own, if you're planning a long trip or especially a through hike, then that cost can really add up over time. Now there definitely is a place for booties. I'm not saying you shouldn't use them at all. There's something that I'm definitely going to bring. It's helpful to have your dog trained to wear booties. And the reason is because booties can be really, really helpful on hot pavement, right? Like my sister lives in Arizona, she lives in Phoenix. So her dog has to wear booties in the summer if she's going to be able to take it out to go to the bathroom during the day, right? Um, especially if you're through hiking, you're probably going to have to road walk at some point on hot asphalt or be in town. So that's definitely a good use for booties. Um, even backpacking in the parking lot and stuff. If you are hiking in the winter, then of course booties are really helpful for that. I try not to use them in the winter as much as possible, but for small dogs like Skittles, like you just can't get away from it sometimes. Her body is so small, her feet are so small that they're just going to get cold, especially when it's a place like here in Alaska where it's pretty cold all the time. The sun's not out very high in the winter. And so for a lot of dogs, that just becomes kind of a necessary thing. And if you are wanting to know more specifics on winter paw care, I did make a video on that that I'll post up here as well as down in the description below. And if you are looking for more specifics on that, I would encourage you to go watch that video as this is going to be geared much more towards summer backpacking and through hiking as well as day hiking. So other times where booties might be helpful is if you are trying to get your dog's feet to toughen up, especially in hard surfaces. So a lot of dogs really struggle with granite. Even if they have tough paws, their paws will get really beaten up. You know, that's something I saw on the Colorado Trail and just living in Colorado is that we have that pink Pikes Peak granite that breaks down and just makes lots of gravel and stuff on the front range and you see it a lot on the first segments of the CT and that was really hard on my dog's paws. I've also heard there's lots of granite in the Sierras as well as another thing to keep in mind is that obsidian, that like lava rock and volcanic rock that you find in the Cascades can be really sharp and be really hard on dog paws as well. And so it's definitely finding a balance. Just because I suggest that you don't use booties very often doesn't mean you shouldn't and there's not a place for them. So, and there's also nothing wrong with using them in situations where you think you need them and then taking them off afterwards. So for example, 
on the St. Louis Loop when we were finishing on the Colorado Trail. If you've ever hiked the CT, you know right after it splits off from the CDT to head down um, towards Mullis Pass and Animus River that you have to drop down the Elk Creek drainage, which is very steep and incredibly talus filled and rocky. And it's really hard, um, lots of really sharp rocks. And that's definitely a place where even though I had my dog's booties off for a while to get their feet a break, I put them on before we descended because I knew it was gonna be hard on their paws. So as far as the type of booties go, this is again going to depend on your dog. I personally will be going with mushing booties once again, just because they are more economical. They're easier to fit. There's ways around fitting. If they're hard to fit, like on Skittles, you can get different you know, thickness and that kind of thing. So that's something to keep in mind. You can use other kinds. I use kind of like Mutlux knockoffs when I was in New Mexico because I needed more and that's what they had at the store. You know, that's usually what you find at like little local pet stores and that kind of thing. And those worked fine as well. So you're just going to need to experiment and find what works well for your dog. Okay, so now you're saying don't use booties, but you had a lot of foot problems still. Like, what's this all about? And so, of course, the other issue is sore feet, especially if you're not using booties. That is something that I just have struggled so much with, and it's one of my biggest causes of anxiety for the CDT, is making sure that my dog's feet are properly toughened up before we hit the trail, and that they have a chance to continue to toughen up at the beginning. Again, another thing one of my vet friends told me is that it really is better to just let your dog's feet toughen up. I don't know, for those of you that have also gone backpacking or on a through hike, you know that your feet toughen up over time, right? Like it's not as significant or severe for most people as it can be for a lot of dogs, but you can definitely tell your feet get calloused, they get tougher, they get used to all the rocks and stuff. And the same thing happens with dogs and it can be a process. Some things that you can do just from my own research, talking to other people, again, looking at hunting dogs, sled dogs, that kind of thing is to walk your dog as much as possible on pavement as well as on gravel and on rocks. So basically don't walk them on dirt surfaces, especially soft dirt or grass if you're trying to toughen them up for backpacking season, which can be challenging depending on where you live, right? So if you live somewhere like the Midwest, and this was a problem we had, especially before the CT, um, then try to spend more time walking them around town, which can be frustrating, but it'll be better for their feet, especially if they like to play frisbee or run and chase tennis balls, having them run on those surfaces is good. Although of course be careful because you don't want them to get injured. And that has definitely been a concern for me is balancing that like wanting Prima to play and run around and toughen her feet, but I don't want any accidental injuries at this point. Yeah, because it's, it's just hard on their feet. So you want them to be able to get used to those surfaces. So when they hit the trail, it's not a big shock to their system and they go lame really fast. A lot of people are big advocates of using paw wax. You'll definitely see a ton of people suggest Musher Secret. I do think you need to be careful. I know my, again, my vet friend really suggested using something that's wax-based, especially like beeswax based works the best. I believe that's what the vet that was on Backpacker Radio said, as well as to make sure to use something that's beeswax based. And that's just because you don't wanna use something that's like jelly, like petroleum jelly or Vaseline or that kind of thing, because it actually makes it soft without making it tough. So the whole point of a paw wax is to make the paw tough, but also supple so it doesn't crack, especially really dry places like the West is very dry. That's going to be another concern for us going from humid Alaska back to Colorado and the Rockies is their paws getting dried out and cracked because those cracks can become painful. And so you wanna find that balance, right? Musher Secrets tends to work well for most people, although again, I think in that Backpacker Radio episode, she did say she didn't use it that often. So a lot of people suggest using it just at night. That way the dogs are not picking up rocks. You know, the rocks are sticking to the Musher's Secret as they're walking or the paw wax as they're walking. So that's something to keep in mind as well as maybe like inside their boot to kind of lube their foot. So you're gonna have to play with it and find what works best for your dog. And that's kind of the whole moral of the story, right? Is all of our dogs are different, and so you just need to find what works well for where you're hiking and the type of feet your dog has. Because some dogs are just much more prone to foot issues than others, especially if they're really lightly pigmented. So dogs that have pink pads are more likely to have more issues. Some dogs just naturally have softer feet. So do keep that in mind. So I have heard of another product and I've been hesitant to try it out. So if any of you have used Tough Feet and have had success with it, I would love to know in the comments. This is a product that I found that some hunters have used with their bird dogs. You know, their dogs get their feet really beat up because they're off trail and stuff and they only do it for a short season, so it can be hard on some dogs. And some people have had rave reviews that it made a huge difference for them and their dogs. Other people have said that it actually makes it so tough that it cracks. 
So I'm not sure how I feel about that. So that is something that you could maybe investigate, especially if you aren't going on such a big make or break trip or you're just trying it out, getting started. And like I said, if you've used it and have had success with it, I'd love to know. So be sure to let me know down in the comments. Oh, another thing that you could possibly think about adding to your dog's foot kit would be super glue. So I have seen that some people will, um, if they get cracks, will super glue it just so it doesn't get stuff in there. Of course, you wanna be careful and make sure that they don't get bacteria in there and it gets infected. So I would be kind of hesitant to try that, but I did want to point that out there. So other tips to kind of help you when your dog out on the trail, definitely include keeping their nails short, but not too short. So this is again, a big mistake I think that I made last year with my dogs is so many people say that when dogs are out hiking every day, it'll keep their nails short. You won't have to clip them. That's not true for all dogs. I hate to break it to you. Some dogs, yes, that works great. But especially if you are using booties, then that is not going to be the case. And it's also going to depend on where you're hiking and your individual dog's nails. So I would really recommend considering if you were through hiking, bringing nail clippers or going into town and having them clipped every once in a while, like once a week. If you're just doing summer backpacking trips and summer hiking trips, then just make sure that you're keeping your dog's nails short. I did read on some dog sledding blogs and stuff that you don't want to keep them too short. So you'll see that a lot of people that show dogs like Dobermans and Rottweilers and stuff, they keep their dog's nails so it's like this this long, right? So you don't want to be so short that they can't get grip, but you definitely want them as short as you can get them in general. And this is for a couple reasons. It can change the shape of your dog's foot. It can also, if you're using booties, cause the booties to sit differently on their foot. So I think that's what happened with Prima getting sores on the tops of her feet was her nails were so long that it caused the booty to stretch and rub more on the tops of her feet. Whereas if they'd been shorter, the booty would have sat up closer and we would not have had that problem. So I would recommend definitely paying attention to your dog's nails. And if you struggle to cut your dog's nails, then that is definitely an area to of course keep working on. You know, I really hate doing it, but I've made it a habit to make sure that I'm dremeling my dog's nails at least once a week right now, if not twice a week. That way I make sure that we start out on the right foot and I will be taking dog nail clippers with us on our through hike this year. So other tips is if you are just getting into backpacking or going on a through hike, is to start slow. So it can be really hard and really challenging if you feel like you're all really fit. And you know, some dogs might not need this, but a lot of dogs will. And that is to start with lower miles and slowly work up. Especially if you have not been doing a lot of training before backpacking season, this is going to be big. Depending on where you live, this could make a big difference. So like right now where I live, there aren't as many hikes close to me. A lot of the trails are going to be muddy instead of rocky. We're going to be a lot lower in elevation here in Alaska than in Colorado, a lot more humid. So when we hit the CDT, my dogs are going to be dealing with adjusting to all of those things again. So it's going to be really important to start slow for them, but also for their feet. So by starting slower, starting with lower miles, it gives their feet more of a chance to toughen up and get used to the trail without them getting really beat up, right? So I'd rather start slow and be able to pick up later than to start fast and then have to take a whole bunch of zero days or days off or have my dog sidelined. And that's the same as true as if you're weekend backpacking or even regular hiking, right? If you're just getting into day hiking, doing 14ers and stuff, start it slow, take days off. If you have a long summer break, then don't just go, go, go every day after sitting on the couch for the last several months, right? And the last thing, of course, is to check your dog's feet often. So make sure that you're picking them up looking between the pads. If your dog has incredibly furry pads, you might want to consider clipping out the hair. I'm kind of hesitant on that because I feel like the hair might help protect their pads a little bit more, but you also want to make sure that you can see any abrasions, cuts, anything that's happening, sores, those kinds of things early on so that you can address them and help make them better before they cause a problem. Their feet are just so important that you really want to make sure that they're not having issues because if they can't walk and if they go lame, that's going to cut any trip short really fast. So let's say worst case scenario that their feet do go lame and you're trying to figure out how to carry them out of the back country, then a lot of people have been talking about emergency carry harnesses and I did make a video on that. So you should definitely go watch that video next. It's up here. So I'll go ahead and see you guys over at that video and have a great week.